Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name is Jimmy, and today we'll take a look at every single thing that's brand new so far on Android 15. Now, currently the Android 15 version that we're on is beta 1.2. Now, right here, you can see when the last release date was for beta 1.2, which was yesterday on April 25th. The beta right before this, which was beta 1.1, was just a few days ago on April 22nd, and it was first originally put out on April 11th. So here we are, beta 1.2, and I'm going to share everything that's brand new so far, and we'll do the comparison versus Android 14. Now, before we go in depth of everything that's brand new for Android 15, how about we take a look at the timeline of the release of Android 15, which this is the exact same release timeline for every single year of the new Android version. So you always have the developer previews during February and March, and then you have your beta releases in April, May, June, and July. But June and July is more of a platform stability. That means it's pretty much almost ready to be launched. They're just putting out the small little kinks. And then the final release is usually in August, maybe even early September. But I think their deadline that they usually try to go for is sometime in August. August 1st, August 20th, August 28th, whatever it may be. But it could be delayed if needed you know, at early September. Now, the first feature that we'll cover today is archiving applications. Now, this one will come in handy if you want to free up space on your phone from maybe an application you don't use as often. Now, what will happen when you archive an application is that it will uninstall the application from the phone this way, again, saving you space on the device, but it will save and store the icon and your login information. So this way you can always simply go back tap the icon and get it re-downloaded to your phone. Now, you were able to do that from the Play Store itself, but now it's just embedded and a part of Android 15. So how you're able to get this done is you just wanna tap and hold on the app icon and then tap on App Info. So let's say that we take a look at Android 14. We go inside of App Info. Now, this will only work with any application that you download from the Play Store. It doesn't work on anything that is pre-installed. Because if you had something that was pre-installed, you would have a different option other than uninstall. It would just say disable. So on any of these applications that you download, you have the option to archive. So I'm gonna hit on archive right now, and you can simply restore it at any time. Now over here on Android 14, the options you had was open, uninstall, and force stop. So the archive is brand new on Android 15, and what it looks like is this right here. You still have the app icon. You don't have to try to rummage through the Play Store to figure out what you want to bring back to your device. It'll just sit right here. You tap on the app icon, and it'll actually re-download for you with all of your login information. And then you're simply able to go back into the application as if you never uninstalled or archived the application. So now you can see the application sitting there and now I'm already logged in and I can see everything as normal. Now topic number two, let's take a look at widgets. Now there are two things that I wanna share with you inside of widgets here. Now on Android 14, your weather widgets was underneath weather. And once you tap down here, you can see that there was two different weather widgets. Over on this side on Android 15, you can notice that there is no weather widgets. They were rebranded over into Pixel Weather. So if you're trying to find your weather widgets, it is now under Pixel Weather on Android 15. Now, the next thing that they did fix, which is a huge, huge big deal for a lot of people, is let's say that we take a look at Clock. Now, underneath Clock for all of their widgets, there are five different options, but you have to do a lot of scrolling just to see all five. So if I look right here, the most that I can view is two. Now over here on Android 15, they've doubled everything up. So down over here, we do have, you know, that five by two, that world. So you have two of them sitting there. So it's sitting there, but here we are. I can see all four of them right there. So all of these that are in a single little file, a long vertical list that you have to scroll down, they now kind of compile them over into two by twos. So this way you can view more in one screen rather than having to scroll. Now the next feature that we'll take a look at and we'll compare Android 14 to Android 15 will be the sound and vibration, or I should say the haptic feedback and vibration for your keyboard. So when you go over here inside of your sound and vibrations, all you have to do is look for vibration and haptics. Over here again, vibration and haptics. Now, when you scroll all the way down, one of the things that you will see that's brand new on Android 15 is keyboard vibration. So through here, if you'd like to turn off the vibration of the keyboard, you have one simple toggle, and that simple toggle was not over here on Android 14. 
And now for feature five and six, we will go inside of network and internet. So I'll show you what it looks like in Android 14 as well. So you go to network and internet. And once you go inside of internet, this is where you choose the connection you would like to connect to. So let's say that you use B family 5G over here underneath privacy. I'm going to show you what it used to look like on Android 14. And now underneath Android 15, when you go to privacy, one of the nice things you can do now is you can toggle off the send device name, which means share this device's name with the network. So if you're connecting to another network that is not yours and you do not want to send your device name, you can now toggle it off so you're not sending it, which is a very nice privacy option inside of Android 15. And now on to feature number six, you just go back one page. This is your internet page here. This is all of those Wi-Fi networks that you want to connect to. On the bottom of that is network preferences. Now underneath network preferences in Android 15, you have one brand new toggle and that is allow WEP networks. So WEP is a older security protocol that is less secure. So if you do not want to connect to any WEP networks, again, which is less secure and an older security protocol, then basically you turn this off and not now you will not connect to any of those less secure connections. Feature number seven, we'll go back inside of the settings. And for this one, we'll take a look at default apps. So you just want to go inside of apps right here. And then towards the bottom, you can see default apps. And that just means that you're setting what application you want to open up when you want to use, you know, any browser app or digital assistant your home app, phone app. But over here, what is brand new on Android 15 is the wallet app. So this is the first time ever that you can change the default wallet app to use, which currently is set to Google Wallet. Now, there isn't many that you can choose from currently on Android, or at least out of the box, but this gives the ability for more companies to create or more application companies to create other wallet applications if you would like to kind of switch around which default wallet application you would like to use. It's just nice to see that they're able to open up this uh, wallet application to other people. Now, feature number eight, this one is not only for Android 15, but it is now also for Android 14. I don't know when this was changed or added or updated, but let me know if you see this as well, or if you've noticed it from before, let me know about when you saw this. When you go inside of your settings, you go all the way down, you tap on Google. Anything and everything Google is right here. These are the recommended things that you can do, like nearby share, find my device, the Google wallet, the password manager. And then you have all of your services here in all of these different categories. So instead of you having to go through several different areas of your device or log in on a computer or whatever, everything is right here. All your ads, the autofill, the backup stuff, your device plans, devices and sharing, find my device, game dashboard, kids and family, the mobile data and messaging, personal safety, setup and risk. You, ha you have every single thing in one spot, which is super easy and convenient. Again, it's not only for Android 15 beta, but it's now on Android 14. I just don't know when it was updated. Feature number nine is one that's small and subtle, but you are able to tell the difference between Android 14 and Android 15 if they're sitting next to each other. So when you go through and you want to rename a folder, beforehand on Android 14, the keyboard comes all the way up to the very bottom of the folder for the name. And now on Android 15, you have a small little space in between. So it is kind of nice. It keeps it a little separated. It keeps it clean, but you can tell here that, you know, when you take a look at all these different folders and you want to try and name them, the keyboard goes all the way up to the bottom and now there is a small little space. And then for the very last feature, which is feature number 10, I can't show it just because it's not available yet, but I at least want to mention it. On the Pixel tablet, currently you're not able to put any widgets on the lock screen, but upcoming during Android 15 with some of these updates coming soon, you will be able to in fact put widgets back on the lock screen for Android 15. So hopefully you guys found this video to be helpful and you appreciate the video. And if you did, give it a big thumbs up. Don't forget to hit subscribe. Subscribe on the very bottom left-hand side. And if you like this video, then more than likely you'll also like this video. And I'll see you guys later.